Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, calculating rate of reaction. This topic was requested by Danny Becker, Ijaz YouTube, Rachel Elvin, Tharasan Kanaga Sabai, Rhodesman Zudin, and Specker. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Here's a little tip. People hate maths in their science exams, and so they skip the maths questions. If you're having a go at those maths questions, then that can hugely increase the number of marks you get. And remember, you're in competition with all those other people. So if you're getting those questions right, or even partly right, then that puts you well ahead of a lot of people. Make sure you're not that person who skips the maths questions. Now there's some maths in chemistry. Rate of reaction is one of the bits which you're going to see. And it's pretty easy actually. A lot of people are put off straight away and will totally leave these questions behind. But I hope by the end of this video you're going to see it's pretty straightforward. Whenever you're talking about a rate of anything, it's how quickly something changes over time. So usually what you're going to be doing in that calculation is you're going to be dividing by time. And that's exactly what happens with the rate of reaction. You're always looking at either how much product you've formed over time or how much reactant you've used up over time. And so you've got two equations which are pretty much the same sort of thing. You can either get rate of reaction is amount of reactant used divided by time or you can get rate of reaction is amount of product formed divided by time. So you're always dividing by time and that's true for any rate calculation that you're always looking at how it changes over time. Now that might be time in minutes, it might be time in seconds, it might be time in hours, and it doesn't really make a difference. You're doing the same calculation each time. So let's have a look at a couple of quick examples to see just how easy this is. Let's imagine we're looking at the thermal decomposition of limestone. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, now would be a good time to have a look at my video on the limestone cycle. It's pretty simple. But let's say that we start with 24 grams of limestone and it takes six minutes for them to be completely reacted away. Our calculation is just going to be the amount of reactant which we started with divided by the time taken. So we started with 24 grams of limestone. So we're going to do 24 on the top of this fraction and it took six minutes. So it's a six on the bottom. So you're just doing 24 divided by six, which is a pretty easy calculation. 24 divided by 6 gives you 4. And your units here, well you started with grams on the top and you started with minutes on the bottom, so it's just going to be grams per minute. Or to put that all together in one sentence, the rate of reaction here, or we might want to say the mean rate of reaction because reactions don't always run at a constant rate, but you're not going to have to do a calculation any more complex than this. But the mean rate of reaction here is 4 grams of limestone per minute. That's all there is to it. Now that may feel unnervingly simple to you. You may feel like I'm somehow missing something out, but it honestly is that simple. You'll always have an amount of something which will be given to you, and you'll have a time that it's taken, which will also be given to you. You just do the amount number divided by the time number. That's all there is to it. Let's have a look at another example to do with the products. So let's imagine that we're reacting magnesium with hydrochloric acid, which forms hydrogen. Now with this hydrogen, unlike with our mass of limestone, which you'd measure on a balance before and after so that you could tell how much you would got rid of, with hydrogen it's going to be a little bit trickier. So we might do a reaction where we collected the gas in a gas cylinder. This time our amount is going to be a volume, but it's exactly the same sort of calculation. It works in exactly the same way. So let's imagine that our reaction has produced 36 centimetres cubed of hydrogen and that it's taken three minutes to run. So here our amount is 36 and our time is three. You're just going to do 36 divided by three and that gives you 12. What are our units going to be? Well, we started out with centimeters cubed and minutes. So it's going to be 12 centimeters cubed per minute. So just remember both of our equations here can just be summarized like this. The rate of the reaction is an amount of something divided by the time that it's taken. Every single time you're going to do the same calculation, you're just dividing by time. Rate is always per minute or per hour. It's always divided by time. 
Often chemical manufacturers will want to be able to control the rate of a reaction. And so that requires some understanding of collision theory. And I cover that in my next video, which you can see if you click just here. I hope that video really helped you. To see what else I can help you with, there's lots more videos to check out on my channel. Scroll down the main page there to see I've already sorted them into playlists to help you find the video you need. You can also check out my revision guides which cover everything you need to know for the exam. They feature links to my videos, revision tips, cover both foundation and higher tier, and unlike a lot of revision guides, they also point out what you don't need to waste time. If you want to check your learning, try the Snap Quiz website and app, which allow you to identify which areas you need to spend the most time learning. Remember, this is the only YouTube channel which brings you the teachers, the textbooks, and the tests all on your terms, on mobile phone, tablet, or computer, for you to revise when you want and how you want, even immediately before you go into the exam. All of these links and any others for this video will be down in the description. Lastly, it really does help my channel if you want to leave the likes, if you subscribe, or if you know someone else who's having trouble, tell them to search for Mr. Thornton. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.